All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and happy Monday to you. It's good to be back. This is the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 14th of September. We may as well get the bad news out of the way. India is continuing to add COVID-19 cases at the highest rate recorded by any country since the outbreak. On Sunday, the health ministry reported that in the 24 hours to 8 a.m., as many as 94,372 fresh cases were added, taking the total to 47.5 lakh. This includes 37 lakh patients who have recovered and over 78,500 who have died. Now, this may or may not be related to COVID-19, but Home Minister Amit Shah was admitted to hospital again for a checkup ahead of a scheduled session of Parliament, according to a statement from the All India Institute for Medical Sciences. This is the third time that Shah has been hospitalized since first testing positive for COVID-19 on the 3rd of August. He was discharged less than two weeks later, but was treated again within days after complaints of fatigue and body aches. Now, let's talk about the conversation that's dominated the airwaves over the weekend. You'll know by now, based on the coverage that started on Friday, that the SEBI sent out a circular to mutual funds asking them to maintain a 25% threshold for large, mid and small cap stocks, respectively, within mutual fund schemes that are classified as multi-cap. Fund managers, according to the circular, will be free to invest the remaining 25% as they see fit. This needs to be done within the next five months. Now, concerns were raised because some multi-cap schemes have more than 80% of investments in large caps and near zero allocation towards small caps. Reacting quickly to curb some of the speculation and concern, SEBI clarified yesterday that there are several ways that mutual funds can comply with the new regulation besides rebalancing portfolios. SEBI said that mutual funds can, among other things, facilitate a switch to other schemes by unit holders, merge their multi-cap schemes with their large-cap plans, or convert multi-cap schemes to another category like large and mid-cap scheme. So, contrary to some of the speculation, it's unlikely that there's going to be a massive selling of large cap stocks by mutual funds and the buying of small caps. In fact, Nilesh Shah, who is the head of Kotak Mahindra Asset Management, which incidentally has the largest multi cap scheme in the market, told investors that the regulator's new rule would not have a major impact or cause a material change in the investment process. He stressed that the fund house would not buy small and mid-cap stocks if it doesn't make sense for unit holders. One of the other big talking points at the national level pertains to the compensation of a revenue shortfall to states on account of the shift to GST. Now, it turns out that most BJP-ruled states have indicated to the government that they would choose option one out of the two options that were provided. This means that out of the 13 states that told the government their preference, 12 chose the option that involved raising 97,000 crore rupees through a special window, according to a government official. Manipur, which is the 13th state, chose option 2, which would involve raising 2.35 lakh crore rupees from market borrowing. Six more states are expected to indicate their preference within the next few days, while some have submitted their views to the chairperson of the GST Council and are yet to make a decision. Moving on, the RBI, in a paper released as part of its monthly bulletin, has said that the COVID-19 pandemic could prove to be the biggest tail risk event for the microfinance sector in a long time. The central bank cautioned that loan portfolios of non-banking microfinance institutions may be particularly vulnerable to systemic risks posed by COVID-19 and these are largely unsecured in nature. You might want to watch the fund flows going into the new week. Foreign portfolio investors that have been consistent buyers in Indian equities off late have turned net sellers in September, pulling out close to 2,000 crore rupees so far this month. 
And in international markets, all three early rises in the Asia-Pacific region have started the week strong. The Nikkei 225 and the Australian benchmark had gains of around half a percent, while the Kospi in South Korea was higher by about a percent last I checked. And with that, it's over to Hormuz Fatakia for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Hormuz. How are we looking at the start of the week? Good morning to you, Alex. It's good to have you back and a very good morning to our listeners as well. Friday may have been a dull day for the markets, but the action took place on Friday evening. The new SEBI guidelines for mutual funds and the subsequent clarification on Sunday, the hike in ready reckoner rates, all of which may have a bearing on today's trading action. And Alex mentioned to you in detail about the multi-cap funds earlier in the piece, so I will start with real estate stocks. The hike in ready reckoner rates in Maharashtra has taken place just a couple of weeks after the cut in stamp duty and it is the same list of stocks Godrej Properties, Kolte Patil, Suntech Realty, Oberoi Realty and India Bulls Real Estate which may see a reaction today. On to some other stocks now and Deepak Fertilizers has set its rights issue price at 133 rupees a share which is a 17.5% discount to Friday's closing price. The rights entitlement ratio has been set at 3 shares for every 20 held. The issue will open on September 28th and will close on October 12th. On to stocks which are likely to react on the back of rating actions, ICRA has upgraded the securities issued by Yes Bank after its fundraising and a general improvement in the financial profile of the lender. And on the other hand, Care Ratings has downgraded the long-term rating of three arms of JSW Energy, factoring in the termination of the company's plans to acquire GMR Kamalanga Energy. Some stocks on the back of order wins and Ratnamani Metals and Tubes has received a 90 crore order for the supply of pipes to the oil and gas sector, while IGSEC Heavy Engineering has won a 126 crore order from Hindalco for a scrubber system. IRCTC, BHEL, Mishra Dhatu Nigam or Midhani and Pokarna are some of the stocks that will be reacting to their quarterly results today. All the four companies reported a net loss for the quarter. And PVR, Raymond, Steel Authority of India, ITI, NBCC, JB Chemicals and Take Solutions are some of the companies that will be reporting their results today. Root Mobile's IPO was subscribed 74 times as bidding closed on the final day on Friday. The non-institutional portion was subscribed close to 200 times while the retail portion was subscribed 12 times. Some stocks that were buzzing on Friday include CoForge, which ended with gains of over 9% and ended at a record high. Strides Pharma is the second one, which ended with gains of over 12.5% and at the highest level in over 2.5 years. And Ember Enterprises, which ended over 7% lower on Friday after promoter Kartar Singh sold over 1% stake in the company at 1841 rupees a share, while Ascent Investments sold close to 10.5% stake at 1835 rupees a share. Early ticks on the SGX Nifty indicate that the index is flat around the mark of 11,470. You can get more details on all of these stocks and a lot more in our All You Need To Know copy on BloombergQuint.com. And with that, I wish you a safe day ahead and it's back to you, Alex. Thanks, Hormuz. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoy listening to All You Need To Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.